Well, it did become a little political. Not a little. When yeah. LSU was not there for the singing of the national anthem. Iowa Hawkeye girls are hand in hand, respecting our country. And uh, the coach, Kim Mulkey, said, what? What anthem? Honestly, I don't even know when the anthem was played. We kind of have a routine where we are on the floor, and then they come off at the 12-minute mark. That's when the anthem is. We just, I don't know, and we come in and we do our pregame stuff. I'm I'm sorry. Listen, that's nothing intentionally done. All right, with more on this, let's welcome back to the program Scott McKay, Mr. McKay, LSU grad, correct? Correct. And I'm going to read your exact title. You are publisher of The Hayride, contributing editor at The American Spectator and author of Uh, Racism, Revenge, and Ruin. Mr. McKay, I want you to know that I'm an Iowa Hawkeye. I know. I know. Okay. told me. All right. Just Uh, let you know. so uh, uh, Melissa McKenzie, who's the publisher of The American Spectator, and I do a, a podcast every week called The Spectacle. Okay. And the producer of The Spectacle is Kay Cruz, who is an Iowa grad. So I'm a veteran of, like, what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, Kate, the Iowa grad, already gave me the initiation, initiation about, oh, I know you feel so bad about your team losing. I'm like, Kind of with John, uh-huh. like it's women's basketball. Now, oh my- LSU's really good, and uh, you know the program's like I'll follow it a little. But I'm with John. I like you know when the game can be played above the rim. I oh, like watching a game above the rim. Yes. Like but that's, the you know my thing. game it's is about fundamentals. Game Layups in the lane are so exciting. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, when they're made, I oh, noticed the girls I miss a lot of layups. I, you know, like a lot of layups, I know. and it drives me absolutely insane to watch layups from well below the rim get missed. And what about those uncontested um, shots that don't get in? You're like, nobody's on you. You should be making that shot. Yeah. But um, yeah. well, there's way like I, I, you can do this because you know they're both in the final four now. Mm-hmm. Watch the the level of defense between the men's game and the women's game because like, and this came up big last year, you know, like LSU and Iowa play the national championship in the women's game. And and for for a women's game, it was a super, super, super um, um, well-played game. Okay. Uh, I mean, it was Angel Reese and and Caitlin Clark. And I mean, it, it was, you know, it was really something. Then you watch the national championship game between UConn and San Diego state. And the defense from both of those teams was so just uh, strangling defense. I mean, it was like the, one of the most impressive things you'll ever see. And it's like, oh, this is a sloppy game. It's like, no, this is defense. This is the way defense is supposed to be played in basketball. And it takes a level of athleticism to do that, that, you know, you're just not going to see from the women's game, which is not an insult to the women's game. It's just, you know, I mean, the the players are built a little differently, yep. you know? And so, uh, you know, I played high school ball for a coach who was maniacal about in-your-face defense. So, you're like, I had it beaten into my head that this is how the game is supposed to be played. Good for you. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's just... Okay, the, well, let's go back I, to the na- national anthem. I'm not buying Coach yeah, yeah. Mulkey's, oh, when was the national anthem played? Because the world was watching. I mean, not the world, but millions of people were watching. Not a time to skip out on the national anthem. Do you agree at Amy, least with that? Are Are you aware of the fact that neither USC or nor UConn was on the floor for the national anthem in the next game on Monday night? I did not know. I thought they just play it once and yeah. then everybody. Look, in ba- this is the thing: basketball. I, I, and I'm, you know, I, I can't speak to the NBA, but college basketball, it's a very on or off thing, whether the, the teams are on the floor for the national anthem. It's not like football where everybody's expected to be there. And actually, LSU's football team is not uh, – that, that's not the, 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 the common practice because they have a, a – you know, they have a thing. that The band plays the national anthem. Then they line up, and then they bring the team out to, uh, you know, the Hold That Tiger song that the LSU football band plays. So, like – it's an event management thing more than it's, you know, we don't care about the national anthem. It's just the way it's done, which is why Kim Mulkey had this kind of 
you know, nonchalant. You know, first of all, you're asking her a question after her team just got beat, and it's well, like the coach, season's so she over. And she's that, trying to. Yeah. Yeah, she, well, I know, but I mean, like, she's be like, "Are you seriously going to ask me about that when my season's just, you know, just ended?" And the optics aren't great, but like, this is a game management thing. This was not some. Oh, we don't care about the national anthem. They just like, okay, this is our deal now. Um, it's weird when one team is there and another one is not, and I would say that the event management is not the best when that happens, okay, I get it. But the whole point is the next game, neither one of them were there. So this is not like some special thing that LSU did. It's a dumb controversy, and, you know, like, I'll blame Benny Johnson for being one of the people that, you know, riled up. (laughs) Benny Johnson, who went to Iowa, goes on Twitter and immediately, LSU got their butt beat because they're unpatriotic. It's like, okay, stop. Oh, I think Stop. I tweeted out Yeah, well, you know, whatever. Oh, but was, the whole point is, is it's an it's a logistical administrative thing. It's not a – LSU doesn't have kneelers in women's basketball. And Kim Mulkey, let me tell you, if you're a conservative, this is about as friendly as you're ever going to see from a women's basket, college basketball coach in terms of – her cultural worldview. I'm not going to like sit here and tell you she's a political conservative. Like she doesn't talk about it. Um, I I think that, you know, as conservatives, we'd like her fine, but culturally, like she, when she took the job at LSU, she'd been the coach at Baylor, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. And of course the media hates her because when Brittany Griner, who had been her star player at Baylor, and they won a national championship over there. Um, you know, trashed the country and then went and played pro in Russia in the off season or whatever, and promptly got herself arrested for, you know, what it, cannabis oil or whatever it was that she had. Um, like, you know, Kim Mulkey was kind of lukewarm in her support for Brittany Griner. Okay. Oh, yeah, they just so the media her. couldn't stand that about Kim Mulkey. And they've been trying to trash her ever since. But like when she first got the job at LSU, Um, you know, it was like in the middle of COVID. And so you're supposed to wear a mask and all this kind of stuff. Well, she gets to the podium, you know, at the announcement and rips the mask off. I'm not wearing this damn thing. (laughs) The whole state blew up. Oh my God, we got the best coach ever. Right. Because people were sick and tired of that stuff. And she wears the like That's a cultural signal of who she is. (laughs) What's that? Oh yeah. She wear the pink bow on because I coach and I was like, man, I don't look like that when I coach. And I was like, man, she, you know, she's, she's a grandma. This is, this is a she's style hot. thing for her. She's like a real, yeah, she does the whole flamboyant uh, thing. I love it. And look, women's basketball is, um, there's a little bit of a WWE type flair to it yeah. because, well, now there is. you know, they got to put their positioning themselves. They're trying to grow the sport and they're trying to get attention to, to market the thing, which makes sense. But, you know, so what you get is you get a lot of people like Angel Reese is LSU star, and she's, you know, she's a little ghetto. She talks a lot, and, and, you know, it's like, oh, that's classless. And it's like, no, it's they're getting attention, not to mention the fact these people don't make that much money when they go to the WNBA. If they want to make money, they got to, like, get attention and get some big social media following and be influencers and all, you know, I mean, in, in college sports, it's it's an NIL thing, right? right. So that they're doing all of that, and it, this is how you monetize it. Right. Well, so, Angel Reese, okay, so I saw her and Caitlin Clark. They, they hugged and they whispered something at each other. Mm-hmm. But I think we're prepping like a Larry Bird, Magic Johnson rivalry. So when Angel Reese goes into yeah. WNBA. Yeah. Oh no, my. because she went from being yeah. the villain to acting like the victim. Here's what, after the press conference. I just try to stand strong, like... I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Embrace Death it. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things, and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and, like, not be there for them. So I just want to always just know, like, I'm still a human, like, all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. And I would still sit here and say, like, 
I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you. But keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo- being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. So what do you make of that? Okay. I mean, yeah. you know, that's that, sincere. I, I, I'm, yeah, no, I mean, I like, this is, this is her thing. Um, I'm not like, I, I think as uh, she's a great ball player, Angel Reese is not my cup of tea in terms of, um, you know, how she presents herself. I kind of like a little bit more low key approach. But that's not where the, where the women's game is right now right. because they're trying to get attention and all that. So, like, you know, I'm agnostic about it. Um, now, there is an aspect of this that uh, probably bears some discussion. So amid this controversy about LSU not being on the court for the national anthem, uh-huh. uh, Jeff Landry, who's the new governor in Louisiana, who's a you know conservative Republican, puts a, a statement out on Twitter and then follows it up with a letter to the boards of regents for the public colleges in Louisiana, basically demanding, look, we need to make sure that all of the players are standing for the national anthem, you know, in all of the sporting events for uh, public colleges in Louisiana. And if they're not there, we need to start looking at whether we're going to honor the scholarships oh for these guys. Oh, come on. Well, but here's the thing, okay? Like, I, and I know your reaction is the same as all of these LSU fans. They're, oh, Landry needs to say it. But remember this, okay? Every time you have one of these things where there's like a mass shooter somewhere, the left-wing politicians go running to the ratchet and they say, ah, oh, we need to do something about guns yeah. because look at the guns. And we're as conservatives, we're always screaming, oh, we, our people need to, to counter this, okay? So now you have this controversy, which, look, is not about a protest for the national anthem. But what it is, is it's an opportunity. So Landry took advantage of this, and he says, okay, let's attack the kneelers. Oh. Let's use this to attack it. And it's a, this is the way you use the ratchet. So he's going to do this thing, and it doesn't even really apply to Mulkey or her team. Now, from a PR standpoint, she's got to have that team out there for the national anthem going forward, anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, because that. So, but this is this takes it out of her hands. She's like, you know, oh, that's the rule, so we're going to have to follow the rule. Like she, she has now been removed from this controversy. Landry's taking it on his shoulders, but the answer is now we're going to impose con- consequences on the people that would protest at the national anthem and irritate the hell out of yeah. all the folks that voted for Jeff Landry. Okay. Oh, uh, Using like the last it's, game. It's, it's, no, it's exactly right. This is, a, I mean, in the initial reaction, everybody's turning their nose up at it, but the effect that this is going to have going forward is exactly the one that everybody's been wanting to have for a decade, which is do something about these kneelers. They make me sick. No. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. n- nobody's going to kneel when they think they're going to lose their scholarship. Right. Exactly. I that think it's exactly smart. Right. Yeah. Right. And actually, good. Thanks I, for pointing that out. I, I have to admit, I have no idea who you guys were talking about. Oh, with Angel college. Reese. I mean, Caitlin I've seen Clark? her, but I've never watched her. So uh, oh. I've never watched this. Caitlin. Well, she's the one. So last year they were in the national championship, yeah, the, and she kept I saw doing this like yeah. ring. So, and I do want do not want anybody to forget this story. So LSU beat Iowa, uh-huh. and you know Angel Reese with the ring in your face, and yeah. Jill Biden, because you know how they have the winners of the NCAA, yeah. the Super Bowl champs. Oh, so LSU was going to the White House, and Jill Biden actually suggested, Scott, that Iowa come oh, along, know. too. Remember that? Oh, my God. Because, yes. because it's know. women's sport. I mean, how the pandering and the bullshit. I was sick to my stomach. And thank God um, Iowa's coach said, we're not coming. We didn't win. Exactly. And shut well, that I, down. Shut that down. But I was so pissed her. Yeah. when yeah. she did that, just because of the whole ring in your face and stuff. And women, guys have been doing that for years, so women could do that. Right. <laughs> you know, talk smack. We can talk smack just like the best of them, well, you know? And, well, Angel Reese got that from Joe Burrow. Uh, yeah, when LSU won the national championship game in football, 
um, you know, Burrow did that, pointed at his finger when he's coming on the sidelines, you know, put a ring on this thing. It's, yeah, it's not a, it's not a, um, a particular taunt. It's just, hey, we're winning. We're going to get a championship. You know, I mean, it's just, I, you know, and some of like, let them be kids. Okay, let them be kids. You don't <laughs> hey, have to love it. Just, you know, let them be kids. Hey, Scott, I got to, I got to, I, I, that's a point to the questions I'm asking you. Do you think that the Joe Biden White House would uh, plan a transgender day of visibility around a Muslim holiday? Um, I would love to find out. <laughs> you think right? he would do it around a you Jewish mean, like, holiday? Ramadan was on transgender right. day of visibility. Yeah. You think he would do it around a Jewish let's, holiday? Let's, well, put it this way: they can't stop stepping on their cranks over the Israel uh, Gaza war over uh, the the Muslim community, right? right. Like right. they're now demanding uh, what got, what uh, Hamas is demanding yeah. in Gaza. Because he's trying to get those votes in Michigan, right. so I think that's a pretty like obvious way to answer your question, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it was so funny because as soon as all this happened, here you have jo- uh, uh, Carvel shows up on C- Chris Cuomo's show Monday night, and he's like, "Oh, nobody in the Biden White House even knew it was Easter." It's like they had an Easter egg you roll, you me? moron. Oh. Yeah, he says, "Oh, they, they didn't realize. They didn't know what they're going." It's like. Okay, it's and, but we know was, Biden didn't. <laughs> here's what was so telling, and if you go on YouTube, you can find this clip. So uh, uh, Carvel says this, and he starts talking about, well, you know, the people, the people that set this stuff up or whatever. And one of the names he said was Anita. Okay, Anita. So who's he talking about? He's talking about Anita Dunn, who is like the primary message maker for the Biden, for team Biden. She's like the one that created the whole MAGA extremist uh, oh, rhetoric. Yes. If you'll remember the first time we ever saw Anita Dunn was when she got in, I don't know, she wasn't communications director for the white house or something, but like, she was like one of the key people in the Obama white house from the get go. And she like, didn't make it because video surfaced of her talking about uh, uh, the direct quote was something like, uh, you know, we all know, as Chairman Mao said, that power uh, comes from the barrel of a gun. And everybody was like, wait a minute, is there a Maoist in a key position at the Obama White House? And they did some research on her like, she is a Maoist. Well, Anita Dunn has gone on to be the like, number one message maker for the Democrats. And so Carvel lets the cat out of the bag that Anita Dunn is making these calls. Oh my God. So. Right. You got Maoists like what you know, what is Mao famous for? The cultural revolution, yeah. right? Where you persecute the hell out of people who are not like the good communists. Mm-hmm. And she's the one and like, oh, yeah. And, and he's trying to insulate her. But, you know, that that had to pass her desk. Hey, can we do trans visibility you know, day instead of Easter? And she's like, yeah, sure. I know it's March 31st like that always. And that's, you know, that's early Easter for us. But it's also our producer, Quinn McCarthy's birthday on oh. March 31st. So his day is forever oh, going to be trans visibility. No, I'm day. really mad about it. Quinn. <laughs> Woohoo! We're so proud of you. <laughs> All right, Scott McKay, we're going to have to leave it here for this morning. Publisher of Hayride, contributing yes, editor at the American Spectator and author of Racism, Revenge, and Ruin. Thank you so much for joining us. We I'm going to give you a call, Always Scott. appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Have a great weekend. All right, All right. you too. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Hear about the big stories of the day. Then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer.